What up? It's your girl, Sharice. And I have an awesome young man on the line right now. He's an actor, and he's here to talk about his role in the new film, Harriet. What's up, Joshua Shipman? What's going on, everybody? Everybody, thanks for uh, listening in. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, my God. It is such a pleasure. Thank you for blessing me with your presence. I love no the positive vibes you bring, man. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> Most awesome. definitely appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. So we're going to jump right into the interview. Now, you're from Hallsboro, North Carolina. Did I say it right? Indeed, you did. Yep, Hallsboro, oh, okay. North Carolina. So, on yeah. a scale of 1 to 10, and 10 being the country is, how okay. big is Hallsboro, <laughs> North Carolina? Hallsboro is as it sounds. Hallsboro. <laughs> it, it is what we call the dot on the map or the sticks. We call it the sticks. Um country it's pastures open fields farms wow um now i don't i don't know about the tumbleweeds blowing around i haven't seen any of those <laughs> growing up but uh it's not quite that country but okay you know it is spaced out i mean you know we had some pretty good um neighborhoods out there that's for sure um okay. quiet spaced mm-hmm. out and yeah you definitely have to have a you know a car to, to get around but yeah. Um, yeah, Hallsboro is the country. It's home. Okay. Where so, Where's the yeah, closest definitely. bus station? Do y'all have a bus station? Uh, the closest bus station would probably be Wilmington, North Carolina. Yes. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. Yes. <laughs> that, yes. All right. That, that now, would definitely be I, I lived in Wilmington for a little while. So. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Small world. Small world. Yes, it is. Oh, we'll talk. We'll talk. We will talk. Definitely. So, um. As a kid, uh, would you consider yourself like outgoing when you were growing up? I will definitely say I had the silliest sense of humor and imagination. I will say that. <laughs> and I can remember okay. uh, my family. I, and also, I come from a huge family. It's uh, I have eight other siblings. There's nine of us wow. all together. Same mom, same dad. Loving, uh-huh. hardworking individuals they were. My dad passed four years ago. So rest in peace to him. Uh, my condolences. Um, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, sure. Great, great man. Raised uh-huh. us. You know, kept us. You know, kept us going. So, um, I yeah, I would definitely say we had a great childhood. Like a great child childhood. Yeah. <laughs> now, who's we, the oldest out of the bunch? Are you the oldest or youngest? Where do you find your big group of uh, siblings? I am the youngest boy. Um, I have six sisters wow. and two <laughs> older brothers. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of around the middle year. child. Yeah. Okay, middle child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, um, when did you get into acting? Well, from childhood, I just, I literally knew that this was something I was, I was going to do with my life. I don't know. It was a vision that it, that was given to me, and I would tell my siblings all the time, I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be on TV. I know this is what I'm going to do. Um, I knew I just had a, a crazy imagination, and I had, like, I would just do silly stuff all the time. So I just uh-huh. knew that I was going to be some kind of entertainer. I didn't know what I was going to be doing exactly, but I just knew that I was going to be on TV or in movies or something. And wow. Coming, coming from where we're, we're from, you know, we really didn't have the, the, the outlets or the resources back then. You know, my parents, they didn't know anything about this kind of stuff. None right. of my family or anybody that I was around really knew about it. So it's so funny to see this thing come in, into fruition because it's kind of like I pretty much just followed, you know, I, it's like, like being blindfolded and just following with your hands out, trying to see where, trying to feel where you're going. Mm-hmm. That's literally how I got to where I am. You know, it, 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 you know of course, it's all God. God Absolutely. really gave me gave me the the vision and the ability to continue to seek out things. With you know, because most people would have given up a long time ago. So me just just having that spirit in me, like this is what I'm gonna do, and from childhood to grade school theater to high school theater to university theater doing a lot of background work around Wilmington meeting and networking with a lot of independent directors producers um, 
leading companies uh, that were uh, that put on like local casting calls for like local commercials, and I just kind of kept going. That's awesome. I mean, being persistent yeah. will get you where you want to go. It might not be the timing that you want, but you'll get where you want to go. And clearly, you're you have that testimony. So that's awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now, uh, were your parents super supportive of uh, your dreams of acting? Like, like you said, you were telling your siblings all the time, like, "I'm going to be on TV. You're going to see me on TV one day." Like, how did your family and everyone? Um, uh, support you in that aspect I will say my parents no matter what I did of course if it was positive they always mm -hmm. they always supported me you know I was I was very ambitious as a like a young person I was just super ambitious so my parents were always I'm not you know, I'm not too long horn here <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. I Go ahead and super do it, man. This is your interview. Toot your horn as many times as you right. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to make my other siblings jealous. Now let me stop. Um, <laughs> my, they were always proud of me because it's just like I, I always had that ambition to do more than what I was expected to do. So wow. every time I accomplished a goal, my dad, you know, he always had those wise, strong words that stuck with me to this day. You know, graduations and, and, you know, whether I, my grades in school or if I would make the paper because of uh, theater plays, you know, he'd always mm -hmm. have that saying, you know, your your hand is, um, has never gone unnoticed. He's like, you're going to do great things. And mm -hmm. for your parents to keep telling you that and to see that in you, that's, that's basically fuel to your car right there. That That's what keeps, that what, that's what kept you going and mm -hmm. wanted me to make them even more proud because of, you know, they believed in me. Now, the whole acting thing, I don't really think they, um, I don't think they really, I'm not going to say they really care too much about it, but it's just something that, you know, they watch movies on TV and to, to them, this kind of stuff, you know, what we do is, is impossible or not and you know just it's, it's kind of far-fetched you know especially right for living because off you're of not it. in that environment you know you got right in Hollywood, so you don't exactly all <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so for for me to actually like do it and i'm doing it now like my mother i hear it all the time people will get people who know my mother tell me all the time like she always brags about you 24 <laughs> because everybody That's goes it. up and like hey you know I've seen your son on this I saw your son on that he's doing so good in that and blah 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 you can tell that's what he always wanted to do so my mom she she brags on me 24-7 alright mom and as she should she raised an awesome young man and you know you're Thank doing you. your thing so <laughs> I told you I'm gonna hype you up the whole interview <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> Now, um, after high school, you know, you got accepted into UNC Pembroke. Was that always the number one school that you wanted to attend, or did you ha I want to attend any other school? You know, it's funny, like, there was that one moment in high school where I saw everybody going off to these huge HBCUs or these huge colleges, and I was like, you know what? I wanted to do that at first, mm -hmm. and after that, it was kind of like... Um, after that, it was kind of like, you know what? God is going to lead my way. I just kind of felt that God was, he was I, I just really felt that he was leading my way because I could have easily went off to one of those huge schools and just felt like a number. But right. um, after high school, I actually went to a community college in Columbus County called uh, Southeastern Community College. I okay. went there. And I was going to, you know, I was going to just get my 30 credit hours and transfer to uh, UNCP. But um, I kind of had a talk with an advisor and whatnot. It was like, you know, when you go there, if you only go with 30 credits, you know, sometimes all those credits don't transfer. Anyway. Oh, so, man. <laughs> yeah. So, right. You know, so long story short, and they, and they didn't really have the programs that I that I was actually going after. So, okay. I ended up just getting my general arts degree, which is a two-year degree, and I um, went to Pembroke soon after that, like right after I just went to Pembroke. And okay. um, when I was in my I was in my meeting with my advisor, and I'm like, I'm looking through the programs, and the first thing that stuck out to me was actually uh, mass communication broadcast, 
which is right. you know another another outlet of TV or media. And mm-hmm. again, I'm, it's stuck in my mind. I want to do something on TV. I have to do something on TV. So I didn't even second guess it. I went straight into it and got my bachelor's in that and also got a minor in theater while I was there. So, yeah. Look at you, killing two birds with one stone. I feel that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Now, I also did my my research on you. And um, I saw that you've done some commercials and voiceovers. So is it safe to say that your uh, mass communication broadcast degree um, gave you a little bit of experience in that area beforehand? Oh, yeah, most definitely, because during my during my term at the university, um, I tried out to be one of the anchors on the school news, which is Carolina News Today. Uh-huh. And me being in that field alone, um, or me picking that major, it mm-hmm. really helped me as far as like um, voice. It helped me, and you know, at the same time, again, I was taking theater as well. So doing both of those at the same time, it really helped me develop like character, or it really helped me develop um, because I became an anchor uh, for like two semesters. So mm-hmm. that allowed me to feel a lot more comfortable on camera because before mm-hmm. then I really I really didn't do a lot of stuff on camera. So when I started doing the anchoring and the reporting, it, I kind of got I kind of felt my way with um, camera presence and my professors. They would always tell me, you know, you have a really good camera presence. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, I, I guess that works with what I really want to do in life. So right. you know that 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 gave me a boost and. Um, yeah, it definitely, it definitely helped me out, for sure. Okay. Now, I also know that you got into modeling, and we previously spoke before the show started that you are into modeling. Mm-hmm. I saw that you've done, like, print ad campaigns for City Trends. Have you worked with oh, any yeah. other brands? Um, brand, clothing brands, I think that was pretty much the only clothing brand that I modeled for and I did that for about and I did that for about three years and, it, and it's something I kind of fell into it, which was mm-hmm. odd like I found that was my first ever professional professional modeling gig because a lot of people like this is back in the MySpace days and a lot of people would always tell me or they would always ask me Yo, are you a model? Do you model? And at one point I hated I hated taking pictures like I really hated taking <laughs> pictures and when MySpace came out, it's like, of course, you know, you want to have a lot of different pictures on there. So, you know, back in those days, we just, we try to put on our freshman outfit and we took pictures right. and posted them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I did that and I would get a lot of people asking me, like, you really should consider modeling. You really should, should consider it. So I was like, okay, shot in the dark. I saw this um, casting for, and they didn't really go into specifics when they posted it. Um, uh-huh. It said, you know, seeking male model, and they had the age range, and um, they had all the information. It was a company called CG Productions, based in Wilmington. Excellent people. Excellent people. Wow. Um, oh, yeah. Excellent people. So I sent in my information. I was like, all right, shot in the dark. And then I think about a month later, I got a call and they were like, hey, um, we're still interested in you. We just had to push it back because we had some other things that occurred. So I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. I'm still, I'm down for it. And mm-hmm. I started it and it lasted over three years. Wow. That's amazing. That my, like that's, oh yeah. that's cool how that just all came together for you. You know, exactly. it's a lot of people, they, they work forever. It takes them three years to get something like that. Uh, Exactly, yeah. and it was just something I just blind blindly submitted to, and boom. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Now, will you continue to model, or are you going to take a break from that and you know continue to act? Oh, I'm gonna do it all. I'm gonna do it all. Okay, I mean, okay. Whether Simple it be <laughs> <laughs> whether it be modeling or acting uh-huh. or in whatever avenue, this is mm-hmm. just. This is what I want to do. This is this is my life. This is what this you know. This is my dream to to do this kind of stuff. So oh yeah, but I find myself 
doing more lifestyle modeling now because I'm not quite tall enough for like the high staff, which is like 5'11". Okay. See, I'm only 5'9", yeah. so I'm not quite tall enough for the high fashion stuff. Now, unless they see something in me and it's like, cool, we want him, of course, why not? But my dream, you know, is to model for, you know, huge fashion companies, huge powerhouse fashion agencies and stuff like that, of course. That's my and dream. you will. You, you've oh, yeah. been um, speaking stuff into existence since you were a little kid. So I oh, think yeah. it's going to happen for you. <laughs> Exactly. I was doing that. I didn't back then. I didn't. I never even heard of the word um, affirmations, but I was doing that un- unknowingly. Yes. Speaking yes. things into my future. So, oh yeah. Now, who's an actor or an actress that you look up to in the industry? Like somebody's work that you appreciate, or you know, maybe their personality strikes out to you. Like, who's someone that you look up to? Um. Male wise, um, I have to go with my man Denzel Washington. I gotta do it. Okay, I love this dude. Is I love him. Beast. <laughs> like anything that that man touches is gold. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, yes, he yes. is he, to me. He, I mean, of course, there's plenty of amazing male actors out there, but him, like alone right now, he gets mm-hmm. my utmost respect because this dude is just he's just a goat. You know what I'm saying? And and African American male, he's he's killing it in anything that he does. So for him, I would definitely say that's my the male the male actor, or whatever. But female, it's hard. It's and somebody just asked me this question. It's funny because I had the biggest biggest crush on Taraji P Henson, and I love her, <laughs> but I also had the oh, biggest like crush on women. her. <laughs> oh, God, you know, I mean, it's, She's a that's, that's love and right there. But it's good. Yes, yes. I, I love everything that she plays. You can tell that, you can tell it is really her. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can tell, oh, like, that, oh. that's her personality all day long. But going a little older, I always say if I ever had, if I ever played, I mean, if I ever had someone play my mother, or mm-hmm. my aunt, or somebody like that, or, or a family member, it would have to be Viola Davis. Definitely. I don't know why I thought you was going to say her oh, name, but man. she is a powerhouse. I think she was, and yes. She's great, and I could see why you yes. would choose someone like her. <laughs> exactly. Or, or Angela Bassett. Or oh, Angela yeah. Bassett Angela, as well. oh my There's God. so many. There's so <laughs> many women who are, like, amazing and you know, black women who are just amazing in this industry. Now, of course, there's other actresses and actors that I that I do admire, but you know, mm-hmm. you know, just just keeping it in our in in, in our culture. Right. Uh, I got to go with those guys. I mean, okay. they're, they're legends all all day. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of people know that you got a role in the movie Harriet. So, yes. um, how was the audition process with that? Oh my goodness. And it's funny because I almost passed up on this audition. I'm going to tell you oh why. And I'm going to make God. it, yes, I'm going to make it as brief as I can, but I really, now, as an actor or entertainer, we, just like anybody else who works a job, you know, you have right. to put in, you have to put a lot into it and sometimes you get tired. So mm-hmm. when this role came about, I actually saw it online and it was being cast by a major casting director. Um, shout out to Arvold Casting, Erica Arvold, based in Virginia. Shout out to her. She's amazing. Like any actor or actress, you really need to try to link with her because she is great. But anyway, um, <laughs> she had a post. She posted a casting, and I saw it, and it was like for a period piece because, of course, you know sometimes they don't want to go into. Um, specifics when they're posting a new casting call. Right. So I submitted my information and I also tagged my agency in there, uh, which is Evolution Talent Agency based in Charlotte. I tagged okay. them to it and I was just like, it's a feature film. To me, again, I just felt like this was a shot in the dark. So I was like, mm-hmm. alright, whatever. So I said that and then next thing you know, I'd say a couple weeks later, um, I got an audition for it. So I was like, oh man, okay. Um, first ever major feature film um, audition. So I was actually on the way 
to Atlanta with my friend and his wife, in which mm-hmm. I was helping them helping them drive because um, his wife was pregnant at the time. So okay. I was helping them. Um, yeah, I was you know I just kind of lended a helping hand. And I was helping them travel, and so we got to Atlanta. You know, his family they had fresh hot food waiting for us. So we stepped in the door. So mm-hmm. I was like, man. Then I get a notification that basically reminded me that I had this audition that was due in like two days. Oh my I'm, god! <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yo, I just got off the road, and something just kept tugging at me, like, yo, I really need to do this audition. So I was like, you know what, man? I told my homeboy, I was like, listen, I need to help with this audition. So mm-hmm. we literally took my phone some house lighting and a blank wall knocked it out I sent it in uh, speeded it up to fast forward it to Hurricane Florence I got the call back literally three days after Hurricane Florence came through and messed everything up oh my god so How yeah were you affected you know, by Hurricane Florence by oh, yeah. It tore the, oh yeah it tore the Carolinas up like the home one of the homes that I was staying in it caused a lot of uh, mold, and in which that it did it to half of South Carolina. Like people had to literally gut their homes and get out of there because from all the moisture. Because you know, Hurricane Florence stood over. Oh a yeah, and range. you live near Wilmington, so okay, yeah. I know it was bad mm-hmm. in Wilmington and Jacksonville, New Bern. So, yep, yep. Yeah. It, 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 the storm just kind of sat over us and dumped rain for like two to three days. Oh my so, god. So. Yeah, it, it it molded like houses, any house you can think of. It, it there was there was mold damage everywhere. So anyway, getting away from that, I got the call back. I was sitting at my sister's house, and I don't have any service over there whatsoever. Uh-huh. So all of a sudden, my phone dings, and I see callback audition for Harriet. I was like, "What? Wow!" I said, I said "When did I audition for Harriet?" Because <laughs> they. They didn't release the title yet until the callback. So I went, I think they, they they had to reschedule the callback actually because the roads were still kind of messed up. So when I was able to get to the audition, I went, it was in Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. And um, Erica Arvo was actually there. She actually did the, uh, the callback with me. And you know, I thought okay. it was gonna be a quick, I thought it was going to be a quick one line because it, my my audition was only like one line, literally three mm-hmm. words, I think. Oh, yeah, wow. it was like three words. So my that was my initial audition. But when I got there, I did my audition. She was like, she was like, do you have anywhere to go today? I said, nah. I said, not really. So she was like, okay, mm-hmm. take these, go out in the lobby, read these over. It was like about five different more, five more different characters. So I'm like, oh man, like this is the first time something like this has ever happened to me in an audition room. So I was like, all right, this could be good, this could be bad. So <laughs> I took I took the sides, I went out there, I read over them as many times as I could. She called me back in. Excuse me, we went through every single one of them. Wow. And she was like, thank you so much. She was like, you were amazing, and we'll keep in touch. So um, speeding it up two weeks later. I started getting a lot of different emails in like high consideration for this, high consideration for that, high consideration for this, and they kept narrowing it down all the way until on the, um, until they got to the um, Philadelphia vendor. So I was mm-hmm. like, and that wasn't even the role that I auditioned for originally. So wow. when they said when they finally now when it, when all this was coming down, I'm already I'm already you know writing down my information. I'm, I'm gonna book this. I got it. I got the role booked. And then lo and behold, I booked it. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Mm hmm. That's it. That's, that you was sound literally so the story. Humble. You need to be hyped. You should be like, yeah, I got nah. it. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I trust me. Like, I'm I'm always but I'm that that's 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 me though like that's me I'm always a, a laid back I'm very laid back most of the time. Okay. So I like that. I like that. It's like when these things happen, it's like I'm just I don't know. I just I just try to stay as calm as possible, but you know inside I'm I'm screaming inside. <laughs> but because this is like 
this is really what I told myself from a younger age that this was what I was going to be doing. Right. And now so, you're doing it. Yeah, so I'm it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it's very surreal. It's it's amazing, but it's surreal at the same time. Now, how was it? Uh, well, how was your experience working alongside a phenomenal cast? Because you oh, know, man. you got some amazing people that you work with. <laughs> yes, and and it's funny because the only one I met, well, the only the only cast members I met. Um, kind of backing it up a little bit. I got invited to the table read, and I saw, I saw a lot of the cast um, there. I saw Vanessa Bell Calloway. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw the, the uh, Cynthia's uh, father in the movie. I saw, mm-hmm. I saw pretty much all of the characters except for um, what's the guy's name, um, Leslie Odom Jr., who played, you know, the the guy who helped Harry or whatever. Right. Um, I saw everybody except him. And okay. then I didn't meet Cynthia. Well, I'm not was she on was she in the table on the did she come to the table read? I'm not sure if she came to the table read or not. She may have, but I know mm-hmm. they had the uh director, she was doing a video she she uh, video called into the table read or whatever. But um soon after the table read we were invited to the governor's mansion in Virginia. And we had like wow. a social there. Yeah, we had we had a social there, and so we mingled with the cast some more. But um, it's crazy because I never it, it, it blew my mind that Harry that uh, Cynthia was um, from England because I literally thought she was all American. But you know, when she started speaking, I was like, wow, I was, I was blown away. You know what I'm saying? And right. Then I started doing my I started doing my research on it because I I, I really didn't know who she was at the moment. So I started doing research and I was like, yo, like she, this woman really won a Tony Award for The Color Purple on Broadway. You know, she won that and she is just super talented. Like her vocals, like it's, it's amazing. And she's very, very kind, soft spoken, down to earth. Like it was amazing. Wow. Like when we were shooting our scene, she mm-hmm. gave me nothing but compliments the entire time. She didn't construct me. She didn't. She was just like, "You're you're so graceful." She was like, "I love it." She was like, "You're very graceful, and it's perfect for this role." And mm-hmm. um, at, right after I shot my scene, she um, we hugged and she we took a picture, and that was wow, that. Wow, that's it was great. Easy. <laughs> Super easy. I mean, it was one of the, the most amazing experiences yet in my career. So definitely. Okay. Did anyone from the cast give you advice that um, you definitely believe is going to help you along the way? Um, not necessarily. Um, pretty much, you know, keep doing you. Just pretty much keep doing you. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, you made it on this film, so evidently you're doing something right. <laughs> right. So they were just like, you know, that's true. Keep doing, yeah, they were like, hey, I mean, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Casey, Casey Lemons, the director, she's amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, super nice lady, super nice woman. Like, it's, it, it, I mean, that's pretty much what it was. They were just like, hey, keep doing you. You're amazing. Um, just continue. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, do you believe the movie was portrayed accurately? Harriet Tubman story. Oh yeah, for sure. And this is the thing. And this is and this is what I someone actually well a classmate of mine, a former classmate, he made a post and he, you know, he basically it was to show me props for getting the role in the movie. But this is and it's not verbatim what he said, but this is pretty much what he said. He said, I didn't go to see Harriet for a history lesson because of course Harriet's journey and story would have been hours and hours and hours long. Right. You have to put you have to take that in consideration. You know, this is Hollywood. Now right. if they if they wanted to do if they wanted to go that route, they would have turned it into a documentary. And it right. would have never it would have never went to the movie theaters. But they wanted her journey to be showcased on in the theater. So of course Hollywood has to put their touch on it a little bit. 
from what I know, I saw, I, and, it's, and it's not just because I worked on it. I, I'm telling you right now, even if I wasn't a part of this film, mm-hmm. I loved the movie. I loved it from beginning to end. I loved the movie, and I'm only in one scene. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a very powerful scene, mm-hmm. but I'm just in one scene. So, it, 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 I can't say I love it because just because I worked on it. It's literally because I this woman's journey was I mean it was un, it was unfathomable like nobody that you know would have ever even attempted to do anything like like Harry Tubman in this right, generation she her life every day <laughs> a h- hundreds of miles hundreds of miles to save people that she did not even know she just knew that they were black they were slaves and she got tired of seeing that right she didn't believe. She did not believe that slavery was supposed is, is real. So she was like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the best that I can." And this lady ended up freeing seven hundred and some slaves. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. But I mean, you know, we know the story, but I, I feel like you know, watching it in the film will give you another perspective of it. Like this. Oh you yeah. Know, we know that it happened, but. You know, it give you another you, type of emotion. You know, when you see it, you know, you 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 will know. Like people, people have cried watching this movie. People have mm-hmm. people have really enjoyed watching this movie. And I mean, it's got some of the most amazing reviews. Of course, you have some people who don't agree with the movie. They don't, you know, some people don't agree that she was British and why did she play Harriet Tubman? But mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you know, if you see Giselle playing somebody American, do you question that? Or do you question, right. did you, nobody question a guy who is also from England who played um, Martin Luther King. If you ever seen the movie, um, the Martin Luther King film, he was also British. And nobody I questioned don't think that I've seen at all. That one yet, but I'm going to go yeah. look into that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I his name is kind of hard to pronounce, but he's also mm-hmm. British. But he played Martin Luther King. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that movie. Now, was did all, you oh, find so, anything that's... new about the story before that you didn't know? Um, the fact that see, I knew I knew of the Underground Railroad coming up through school, and I, I, right. I I've heard of the Underground Railroad, but the number of people and her actual journey doing all this stuff and having to deal with you know having a bounty over her head for doing these things like and 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 just and just moving and just moving by just by the voice of god basically through the woods and all this crazy stuff you know it's it, it, and i almost said too much that's why i, I kind of <laughs> said it, i almost said too much so i had to stop myself but, Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, no I'm problem. No see problem. See we see. can have another. Con- we can have a part two. Or right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I almost said too much, but yeah, I I think the movie did it just right because okay. stretched any longer, it would have people would have lost attention to the film. I mean, it right. literally keeps you in the film from beginning to the end of it. Like you're okay, so it keeps you engaged basically. the entire time. Oh yeah, it, it keeps you engaged. Yes, the whole film. Definitely. Okay. Now, did you find? I'm oh, sorry. Now, what's like next for you? Uh, do you have any upcoming events? Can you give us a scoop? I do. Um, coming out in February. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what part of February, but I do have mm-hmm. a show that's a limited series um, on Showtime. It's called The Good Lord Bird. Um, Ethan oh, Hawke. He, yeah, do you know who Ethan Hawke is? Say that again? He's Ethan Hawke. Do you know who Ethan okay. Hawke is? Yeah. I do not know he who is, Ethan Hawke is. <laughs> he is the guy <laughs> who played the rookie cop on Training Day. Oh, yes. yes. I know who that is. Yes. I just didn't know yes. the name. So now I can put yes. a face with the name. All right. Oh, yeah. So he's the guy who played the, the rookie cop on Training Day. And he got together with um, a team, and they uh, did a um, they what do you call it? Re- not a reenactment, but a, a adaptation of a novel. They did an adaptation of a novel, and 
It's called the Good Lord Bird, and I forgot the author's mm-hmm. name, but um, it, it's good. It's going to be amazing. Like I can't really say too much about it, but it okay. comes out in February, and it's going to be on Showtime. And it, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be a beast of a show, definitely. Awesome. I, I believe it will be. I believe oh, it. Yeah. And before you go, can you share your social media with our listeners? Oh, most definitely. Um, it's Joshua T. Shipman. That's um, J-O-S-H-U-A. T as in Tom and Shipman as S-H-I-P-M-A-N. It's the same thing on um, Instagram as well. But and instead of it being spaced out, it's Joshua.T.Shipman on um, Instagram. Yep. All right. Well, it was a pleasure having you on my show today. Thank you. I really appreciate you reaching out to me. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. It's your girl, Sharice, and I'm out.